Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romney. Now, have you ever had a time where there was a narcissistic person who was just raging at you and you start feeling a sense of panic and just need to get the hell out of there? You're like, ah, 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 and you're just like, I gotta go. Now, drop a comment if you've ever experienced that because that sounds like flight. In this series, we're taking on the ways your sympathetic nervous system react to narcissistic, difficult, or toxic people. Your sympathetic nervous system is your friend. It's trying to keep you safe. And narcissistic people are often experienced as a threat, which is why we can feel that sense of, again, fight, flight, right? We're these classical sympathetic nervous system kinds of responses. Before we get into that, if you do end up finding this video helpful, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. It helps this channel get suggested and reach other people who might not know about it. And again, we're trying to make help as many people understand this as we can. And please click the bell to be notified when I upload new content daily. Just sort of a reminder, like a daily multivitamin. It's your daily anti-narcissism antidote. When we traditionally have thought about the sympathetic nervous system, we do usually think about fight or flight. Now we've talked about fight, right? That's understandable why you'd want to fight, but you know that's not going to get you anywhere with a narcissistic person. So let's take on flight. In its simplest terms, flight would be when you run away. A snarling tiger is chasing you. What do you do? You run. Fighting wouldn't really make much sense. The nervous system then mobilizes to send blood to your legs and anywhere and, and, and away from places you don't need it to get you the hell out of there. Now, flight makes lots of sense when we think of it as, I need to run away and get away from this thing that's dangerous. But what about in a narcissistic relationship? The stress of that relationship consistently activates our sympathetic nervous system, doesn't it? Now, flight in that situation isn't literally running away from the, them, from them, but it sure as hell is tempting to do that. Instead, flight is really about wanting to get out of the situation. It may be because you are feeling like you can't breathe, that you're panicking, that you're getting raged at, and you don't know what to do, and it feels like the only safe thing would be, I need to get out of here. It's not a bad strategy. Getting out would stop you from having to listen to the raging or gaslighting. It would get you safe, except it's never that simple, is it? The narcissistic person may follow you as you try to step away or rage at you louder or some more and say that you're disrespecting them by walking away or not listening to them, even though that they're yelling at you or that you're being a coward. And honestly, how many times can you realistically keep walking away from someone when they do this on the daily or you live with them? especially when you're also simultaneously having to manage practical factors like small children or you're in a moving car or this is happening in the workplace. If you can get away from the screaming and the yelling and the invalidating and the gaslighting, your nervous system will calm down. It's a, it will be rewarded, right? And so many people just figure out how they can get out of the situation as quickly as possible, though the flight response means that they really want to run out of there. I wish more people would go with flight, but I also recognize it's not always possible. For example, if it's late at night and you have kids in the house with you, or it's not safe for you to leave a situation you're in, or when you were a child enduring a narcissistic parent, and you had that flight instinct, but you simply may have had nowhere to go other than to hide in a closet or some other hiding space you may have had. Interestingly, narcissistic people do not like it when you flight. They want you to finish the fight. The antagonism of narcissism is such that fighting is their thing. It's a tension release for them. And you flighting, well, that doesn't work for them. And interestingly, you stepping away can escalate their abuse in a given situation. In addition, your flight means their abandonment issues get activated. So you walking away can activate that abandonment rage and make the situation worse. Our sympathetic nervous systems just can't win. Nothing we do can really keep us safe. Now, it's interesting. I have observed survivors of narcissistic abuse who may have actually gotten out of their primary narcissistic relationship or gotten out of narcissistic family systems. And now 
they find it very difficult to remain present, sort of mentally present, in any situation. When a narcissistic person is raging or invalidating or manipulating, even if it is not happening to them. For example, in a workplace or at a social event or even among strangers, just seeing it happen to, even to someone else, they may quickly feel the need to get out of the situation. The strong sympathetic nervous system reaction evoked by a reminder of an old narcissistic situation can lead people to just say, as they're breathing faster and faster, I gotta go, and they get out. What's interesting is that if you are a flighter, especially if you regularly leave during fights or other kinds of antagonistic episodes with narcissistic people, and for example, you are in couples therapy, you may get called out for being the one who is stonewalling or blocking communication because you keep stepping away. In that case, the flighter, the person who flights, will actually be the one who might end up getting pathologized more in therapy than the raging narcissist would. I would argue that flight isn't always about getting up and running away. It may also be about sort of mentally cutting out of a situation. It may be about a person just shutting down and not interacting anymore and almost sort of pulling yourself out of the situation psychologically. Your body is still there. You can hear what they are saying to you, but you don't participate. It could almost be experienced as almost a mild dissociative experience. Now, again, please, we'll always welcome your comments. Please drop a comment. In your experience, how do narcissistic people react when you aren't reacting, when you're just sort of sitting there, but you're not really there. Now, this form of psychological flight can result in the narcissistic person becoming more enraged because you won't go to battle with them and is more likely to be met with the narcissist saying, oh, here we go again. You're just going to shut down and not talk, right? I can't say anything to you because all you do is just go quiet on me. They, of course, take no ownership for their raging and for their terrifying anger. It's just not satisfying for them if you aren't becoming worked up and yelling the same way they do. But remember why they want you to get so agitated. So they can tell you, so they can gaslight and say, wow, you need to calm down. That ultimate gaslight, painting you as the agitated one after they froth up and bait the situation. But the quiet flight, as it were, no matter what you do with these folks, you're still going to get put in harm's way. Your sympathetic nervous system is your friend. It just wants you to be safe. But it is no match for a narcissistic person who's coming at you. Lions, tigers, muggers, car accidents. Your sympathetic nervous system has all of that covered. But the manipulative gymnastics of the narcissistic relationship, forget about it. Whether you fight or whether you flight, you're sort of screwed. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. It helps this channel get suggested. It helps it reach other people who may not know about it. And as we said, one of our greatest tools in fighting back against narcissism as a whole, not just in our lives, is the more people who get it, hopefully the less people who might enable it, and the more that we might someday move into a future where there are more meaningful policies and strategies for dealing with these toxic personality styles that are doing so much harm to so many people, institutions, and the world at large. Thanks again.